Um, Welcome to the uh, press conference at the e Foreign Correspondents Club. Um, and I apologize for uh, a five minute delay. Um, I assume you guys are aware that uh, Mr. Hayashi is in the middle of a uh, big presidential election of his party now. Uh, his uh, say boss is uh, running for the presidency of the party. And uh, he's the... Uh, um, he will correct me uh, if, if I'm wrong, but he's uh, sort of in a number two position of, in his faction right now. So uh, uh, he has to work very hard to uh, uh, get his uh, boss, Mr. Kishida, win the uh, upcoming election. But anyway, um, let's get the press conference going. Uh, my name is Teddy Jimbo. I'm uh, uh, co-chair of the uh, uh, Professional Activities Committees which uh, organize all the media events at this um, uh, club. And I'm your moderator today. And uh, of course, today's speaker is uh, uh, Mr. Yoshimasa Hayashi. Uh, he's a member of uh, Upper House, the House of Council uh, Councillors. Was. That's right, that's very important. Uh, he was actually, he resigned. Uh, it, was, it was in July, was it? Uh, uh, I resigned uh, 16th of August. 16th of August. He resigned uh, to run, to, uh, to seek a seat in the lower house. And uh, he, I'm sure he will tell you why, but uh, he's been in a, a, a member of upper house uh, since 19, 1995. So it's uh, 26 years he's been uh, in the upper house. Uh, and he actually um, run um, for the presidency of the party in 2012 once um, against the uh, uh, Abe Ishiba, Ishihara Machimura, but uh, uh, partly or maybe mainly because uh, he was a member of the upper house, uh, he wasn't really considered as a serious contender because the, uh, although there's no law that prohibits the upper house member from assuming the, uh, the prime minister's position, um, there's no precedent that uh, upper house member was ever a prime minister in Japan. So that uh, it is uh, widely regarded that upper house members are not suited uh, for that for the post. Uh, uh, anyway, so he, uh, I think you know, I've known him uh, for how long? 20, 25 years uh, for a long time. Um, I, I met him when he was uh, working for uh, William Roth. The uh, uh, U.S. Uh, Senator well, William Roth. He was uh, uh, the Government Affairs uh, Committee's chairman in the U.S. Senate um, in Washington. But anyway, that's 25, 26 years ago. But anyway, um, uh, I think he made the, mo uh, the boldest move uh, of his uh, political career. He uh, uh, resigned from the upper house and decided to run against uh, another LDP, a very senior lawmaker, uh, Takeo uh, Kamura. Uh, Kamura. Kamura san, Kamura san, a 78 year old veteran uh, who occupies the uh, third district in Yamaguchi Prefecture. Uh, uh, as you're going to run as an independent, or it's not uh, official yet. It's, it, is it official that you're going to run as an independent, or the in decided? Yeah. It's not decided yet, but he is willing to run as an independent candidate without the LDP endorsement because uh, it is uh, possible or likely that uh, the uh, Kamura-san, uh, he's an incumbent, uh, is going to be endorsed as an official candidate in the third district, but uh, he's confident that he can win even as an independent so that he can be a law house member and he'll be a very serious contender for the uh, prime minister's position. So uh, to me, he's, he's doing this uh, to be a prime minister. Uh, but anyway, he will tell you uh, uh, every, uh, what, what, why he's doing it and everything. But today, also, uh, he, uh, I'd like him to talk about uh, what's happening uh, in LDP, some changes happening in the power dynamics uh, within the party, and also um, his um, boss, colleague, uh, Kishida-san is uh, running for the presidency, of course, and uh, he's uh, Kishida-san's right-hand man and uh, um, very close associate as well. So uh, Mr. Hayashi will uh, tell you 
tell his uh, prospect of uh, Kishida-sen's winning or who, uh, whoever is, uh, is likely to win. Uh, so anyway, please uh, w uh, welcome uh, Mr. Yoshimasa Hayashi. And he's going to speak uh, briefly in English, and uh, 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 then we will have a and a as much as possible. He, we, uh, he gave us about an hour, uh, and uh, he will answer questions in English, uh, English questions in English. And he, uh, anyone asks a question in Japanese, uh, he will. We don't have an interpreter today, so can you, uh, would you mind answering all the questions in, in, in English? Sure, sure. Okay, so he will answer, uh, but by the way, he's a Harvard educated, his profile is in front of you, but uh, he, he's a graduate of Tokyo University, and he, uh, he went to Kennedy School in Harvard, he has, he has a master's degree in Harvard, and he worked for the senators, so he speaks very good English too, uh, and also he has held uh, various cabinet posts, such as uh, defense, Agriculture and Education Minister. So, uh, uh, you know, his um, his his track record is well uh, impeccable. Uh, his his weakness is the upper house member, I guess, uh, by Nagatacho standards. But anyway, uh, so he will he will uh, speak in English today. So, uh, Thank you, thank you, Teddy, uh, for your kind introduction, and thank you very much, for ladies and gentlemen, to uh, invite me here to give me these opportunities, and. Uh, uh, the, let me briefly speak about uh, what I'm doing and what I'm doing in 10 or 15 minutes fast and uh, glad to take your question and uh, hope that I can answer all the questions. Um, uh, why I'm doing uh, the Kishida uh, for a presidential election, I did uh, last year too, but uh, we are in the same group, uh, Kochikai which was started by the Prime Minister Ikeda when he aimed to become a Prime Minister. So since in 1960s, uh, in Lower House, we have a, a, a mid-size uh, electoral system. So each uh, district had uh, three to five uh, seats. So before we changed that uh, uh, to single members district in 1996. So uh, since we have a three to five seats, naturally there is a three to five uh, factions. So in Prime Minister Tanaka days, uh, he was said to be, said to be completing the uh, five faction system. Before that, I understand that uh, so many members are non-faction members, independent within the LDP, but the Tanaka tried to uh, increase the number of his own faction so that the no remaining uh, members are independent within the LDP in those days. So after, in 1996, the uh, uh, single members district started, uh, things are changing again. The uh, power of the faction is uh, uh, decreasing. So um, after Prime Minister Koizumi uh, increasing number uh, of the members uh, chose to be uh, independent within the party. So, but still, uh, the independent number is like 60, 70 members now. And uh, that's Prime Minister, former Prime Minister Suga was supported by many of those independent num members who was uh, very close to Suga himself but still uh, non-faction members. But the remaining uh, is uh, 200 something is still belonging to the factions. And I belong to uh, Ikeda faction and when it was Miyazawa faction. So I, uh, I was uh, a track record very close to Miyazawa. Uh, I was uh, uh, assistant to finance minister uh, within Miyaza cabinet, and then the, uh, I was a sec, uh, vice minister for uh, finance minister Miyazawa. So uh, Kishida-san and I uh, has been a member of the uh, Coach Kai uh, for almost uh, 26 years now. So I know him very well, and he's a decent man and, and uh, full of uh, uh, stabilities and never never lays hands, never shout, and very st stable, um, friendly. And at this time, uh, he's become really decisive. Uh, since last time, last year, he ran for presidency, 
Uh, it's very difficult for him to decide for such a big challenge, but this time it's very natural and very quick that he decided to land. So uh, after uh, def being defeated last time, I think his uh, personality uh, changed a little bit towards more fighting uh, man rather than uh, soft uh, kind of cooperating uh, type of uh, characters. But anyway, uh, since we share the, most of the policies, uh, that I'm a member of the policy lighting for him to, again this time too. But uh, the, for uh, economic policies, he started to say, uh, while taking still this, the abenomics uh, type of uh, three uh, pillars, finance, uh, uh, monetary policies and uh, fiscal uh, stimulus, and then growth policies. But uh, what he's trying to add is to uh, growth and uh, lead distribution. After uh, seven years of Abe uh, economic uh, policies, uh, it is said that we have to uh, take care and uh, watch out how the uh, uh, Gini uh, coefficient is growing. And there is said to be uh, uh, not poor, likely, but uh, lower than middle income uh, status of uh, household is increasing. And uh, used to be we are uh, designing our policies, including tax policies for a model households such as a uh, husband and wife and two kids and husband is working. But now that model is no more a uh, typical uh, household in Japan. So every type of uh, household uh, we have to think about and also the uh, Gini coefficient is increasing. So lead distribution is very important. And using such as tax policies and also uh, using uh, welfare policies, uh, mixture with the co consumption tax, the lead distribution will be the new color of uh, uh, Kishida-san trying to add. And uh, we are calling this uh, new capitalism. And may I say this is a capitalism 4.0. Uh, 1.0 is the start of the capitalism in 18th and 19th, and then the welfare state that started with the FDR. And then we see the uh, uh, such a uh, Reagan type of a new classical uh, capitalism. So we are trying to uh, add the redistribution so that the society still uh, keep this harmonious uh, society in Japan. So that's one thing. And then another thing is, uh, in a shorter terms and the economic uh, strategies, is uh, how to deal with the coronavirus. And uh, uh, to add what the pri former Prime Minister Suga did, uh, we decided to uh, uh, have two pillars. One pillar is to check uh, the uh, status of the coronavirus by uh, offering a free checking system uh, such as PCR and also establishing more, uh, another pillar is establishing more hospitals uh, to accept uh, the uh, corona uh, patient. So those are the two uh, main pillars. Uh, and also uh, using those two, two pillars, uh, the downgrading this uh, coronavirus from uh, category two to hope free category five. Uh, comparing with the opposition party who are saying zero corona, we are trying to uh, get this coronavirus as uh, for example, uh, normal uh, influenza, so that uh, we have to care about that, but not too much afraid of this uh, coronavirus. Uh, after we establishing the uh, uh, vaccine system, and uh, hopefully in this October and November, uh, uh, 
uh, all the people who hope to uh, uh, wish to uh, uh, vaccinate it, wish to be vaccinated, uh, will be vaccinated. And also we are eagerly waiting for uh, the uh, drug for this uh, coronavirus, especially those through, uh, uh, not by uh, injection, but through mouth. So by doing that, uh, uh, the uh, 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 mindset for this uh, coronavirus will be downgraded too. So those are the very important uh, uh, pillars for uh, corona uh, things. So such as those uh, policies, and uh, the third one is coming maybe next week as for uh, uh, foreign uh, policies and defense policies. Uh, so, but uh, those uh, policies are very important because in Nagata Cho, uh, still we are saying that the, which faction will be uh, supporting who and who will be running. So that uh, picture will be set uh, by 17th when we officially start the presidential election. But uh, what we are important is to uh, see that all these uh, things are watched by the people of the nation and who will be voting in the coming uh, lower house elections. So appealing to those people, not only to the borders of the presidential election, but uh, appealing especially the what we, we're going to do uh, to the people who are voting for coming general election is really important. So uh, rather than focusing much about the who, uh, which faction will uh, do what, uh, uh, we are trying to focus on the policy uh, uh, explain, explanations uh, to the people. And the same things happening within the LDP that uh, maybe you have already noticed about the younger uh, second, third uh, times elected members are gathering, uh, asking the faction leaders that, that this time uh, don't rule us. Uh, we, are, we would like to vote freely by listening to what each candidate says about the policies and how to lead the country. And that, that shows that uh, if they are not doing that, maybe they are rebelled just a puppet by the faction leaders, by the borders in coming general election. So everybody is uh, noticing that coming general election is right after presidential election. So, that is the very uh, important and uh, point of this uh, coming presidential election. So uh, this is really, uh, like I said, the faction is, uh, the power is declining, decreasing, but uh, if you remember last time, uh, last year the presidential election was uh, almost decided before it started. Uh, major four factions, uh, except our faction, is uh, decided to uh, support for Suga. And uh, nobody expect the other candidate, Kishida or Ishiba, will win over Suga when it started. And it did. Uh, <coughs> uh, as expected, uh, Suga win, uh, won. But uh, this time, it's really hard to tell uh, that the other factions and Kishida faction we really can decide uh, as a faction to uh, support somebody. Uh, it seems like it's uh, uh, it's a more loose uh, ruling of the faction, so that uh, more members, uh, either they are independent or belonging to the faction, uh, thinking about their own uh, survival for next election. So they are, would like to. Uh, uh, act on both freely as on last time. So this is the brief uh, sketch of the, what I'm seeing uh, for uh, uh, coming presidential election. Uh, and uh, very briefly about myself, uh, like uh, Teddy uh, introduced and explained, uh, I decided to run for uh, a lower house election and announced uh, officially uh, the July 15th. And, and uh, accordingly, I uh, resumed and resigned as upper house members on the 16th of August. So I'm uh, now in the movement of uh, 
uh, you know, campaigning for my own uh, campaigning uh, until the presidential election started. So this is a very hard moment. But I have to be in the back in the district for my own campaign. But at the same time, I have to be in Tokyo for uh, presidential election. So. Um, um, why I did for that is to, uh, uh, Teddy already explained that I tried once for a presidential election as an upper house members, but not only the reason is that, but uh, I heard from the members of the lower house that since you are the upper house members, uh, when you call the election, uh, you are not fired. We are all fired when you call the election, but if you are upper house members, you are not fired. So that's uh, the things that they are thinking. And also the uh, constitution says that if the uh, voting result of the upper house and lower house differs, then lower house will have it. So that shows that we are, uh, 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 you know, uh, we are the ones who will become uh, the prime minister. So that's not written in the constitution that upper house uh, members cannot be a prime ministers. But that's a sentiment and kind of common sense uh, within the party. And on the top of that, uh, the, there is a, almost a double number of the members in the lower house and then compared to the uh, upper house. So they have more votes. So. Um, um, then why I ran for uh, lower house and aiming for our presidency and the prime ministership is I, uh, you know, it's not that I would like to be in that position, but I uh, really feel that, uh, uh, you know, driving this country becomes more and more difficult and complicated. Uh, especially com compared to these 26 years ago when I first came here. Uh, so that the U.S.-Japan Defense Alliance is still intact, but that China uh, used to be not the aim of the main framework of the U.S.-Japan Alliance 26 years ago, and uh, now it's uh, uh, maybe more than 10 times bigger than uh, 26 years ago, and we have to care about uh, uh, China as a potential threat. But at the same time, uh, the trade volume between Japan and China and the U.S. and China uh, is more than U.S.-Japan. So, and uh, we are welcoming China's uh, uh, tourist and the Bakugai. Uh, I don't know how I can translate it into English, but the, 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 you know many uh, consumption uh, rely to uh, rely on their uh, tourist. So. The economically, we are intact, and uh, the, in U.S. case too. But uh, in in a security world, we have to uh, take care of them as a uh, potential threat. So it's not like the case of uh, Cold War days that the Soviet Union is the threat, and at the same time, there is almost no uh, trade or people's uh, uh, communication. Uh, so that's the most difficult part that uh, driving this country, uh, thinking about the defense and uh, foreign policies uh, field. Uh, big change happened and the management uh, become more difficult. And also in the uh, economic policy side also, we see uh, the uh, 26 years ago that many uh, Japanese corporations, starting with Toyota, and also many banks, uh, are the, the top 10 companies within the world. Uh, but now we see the Toyota is 36, and there is only one company, Toyota, is in the world 100 uh, big companies. So how we went long? Uh, because Toyota is bigger than 26 years ago, and each bank, uh, maybe partly because they're much, they're bigger than 26 years ago. But we have no big companies in IT platform, uh, such as GAFA uh, or, or BAT in China. So 
maybe we need some new industry policies uh, to aim the new platform, uh, maybe what's coming next after IT platform. So one of the areas I'm aiming for is the green growth uh, areas. Uh, since we have uh, many chemistry companies and the good technologies, so uh, CO2 con control is not the, you know, downsizing the economies, but the using new technologies, we can be a new, have a new industry and industry leader uh, for uh, controlling the CO2. So such as new areas, uh, not uh, only coming from the market and the private sectors, but also government has a law uh, such as R&D and also or, uh, margin, M&A, so that we have more bigger companies in those areas. We have a lesson from uh, semiconductors that, that uh, used to be 60% uh, of the world semiconductor made in Japan, but now it's 20. And still we have a uh, largest number of the factory in Japan. So it shows uh, size of the com each company is very important rather than the number of the companies for bigger investment. So we see in the Intel and TSMC uh, have more bigger size of the company and bigger size of the investment so that uh, uh, new uh, cutting edge uh, semiconductor are only made by those two. So those are the things that uh, government has a, a definite law. So that's a new industry policies. Uh, why I say new? Because we have been doing the industry policies um, uh, led by METI, but that's a catching up. So in Western Europe and United States, there's automobile computers. Then we aim for that. So that's it, always textbook in all those countries, and we are catching up. But now new industry policy has to find a new area like green or AI or, or quantum. Uh, so that is a industry policy when we are at the front of the world economy uh, development. So those are the new things that uh, compared to 26 years ago when I first came. So those are very important and to keep the Japanese society intact and to keep the very safe uh, neighborhood and the long longevity and healthy uh, Japanese people. We need those industries uh, happening and uh, appealing so that uh, their growth uh, will result in the uh, tax revenues so that we can secure those uh, important budget for uh, social security, community building, and uh, infrastructures, education, and so on. So uh, at the end of the day, uh, we see the new uh, industry uh, will make money and coming revenues, making revenues, so that we can invest again and keep the society intact. So the, the driving the country becomes more and more uh, difficult and complicated. So that's why after being 26 years in upper house and uh, uh, five times uh, experience in the uh, cabinet members, I really think that I have to uh, go to the lower house and that, that's a big challenge I know, but uh, clearing that challenge and, uh, and become uh, substantially eligible for the presidency of the LDP and prime ministership. So I stop here and uh, hoping that we have so many questions from you. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Haisan. Okay, we have um, uh, some questions uh, coming in um, uh, by email, but uh, uh, let's start with the questions from the floor. And uh, I, have, I have so far uh, four questions. And if uh, those who are watching online, uh, please send in questions if you have any. Um, so who wants to uh, start? Okay, go ahead. Richard Lloyd Parry of The Times, thank you for coming to talk to us today. Uh, this LDP presidential election is very interesting because there are clear ideological differences between the candidates. 
And that's not always the case, or it doesn't seem to be always the case. Often, hmm. at least to an outsider, it looks as if it has more to do with personality or with factional affiliations. Mm -hmm. But you have uh, Ms. Takaichi, who is clearly a right-wing conservative, mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Kishida, who's, you might yeah. say, more liberal, and then Mr. Kono, who seems to be somewhere in the middle. Um, so the first question is, why, why do you think those differences are are opening up now. And the second question is, is about Mr. Kono, um, because I'm not quite clear exactly where in the middle he is. He, he seems in a lot of ways to be uh, a fairly liberal-minded kind of mm. person. Mm. But on the other hand, he served as foreign minister and defense minister under Abe. He was very tough in his words, his language towards China and South Korea, for example. I know that you can't speak for him, of course, hmm. but as an informed observer of the LDP, I'd be interested to know what you think. Hmm. Thank you very much. And uh, actually, the, there is a difference between former, former Prime Minister Abe and former, uh, not still, he's a Prime Minister, Suga. And the Suga actually uh, was a little bit more liberal compared to uh, Abe, especially the social issues such as uh, uh, selective uh, uh, different surname between the uh, married couple. Well, uh, married couple. Mm -hmm. married couple. Uh, so uh, Sugasan's, uh, I think, for that uh, uh, things. Uh, but as a prime minister, he has to be very neutral about what uh, what to be debated within the party. So, uh, so that is happening. But uh, when Suga <coughs> was chosen as a president last year, it's more whether uh, uh, who's more or closest to Abe in the personality and also policies. So, and Kishida has been saying until last year that he would add uh, redistribution uh, uh, point to the such as, as three pillars as a uh, abenomics. So the, <coughs> but that's the main difference between Suga and uh, Kishida. So now it seems like Takaichi-san is uh, supported by Abe. So and she, what she's saying uh, is, keep Abenomics and keep Abesan's policy in the social side too. So it's like uh, uh, if we keep in touch with the uh, Abenomics in economics uh, and also social policies uh, in Abesan's uh, uh, days or uh, shift from Abesan's by saying we need more di redistribution and that means maybe uh, capitalism 4.0, 3.0. Absent still, uh, not as Koizumi sans, really capitalism 3.0. He's also saying that uh, we have to raise the, the salaries, and we did, and uh, that nice uh, 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 connection between salary lies and uh, more consumption and corporate sectors uh, more. Uh, performance. So, but uh, what Kishida san is trying to do is more add more one more point for redistribution, and uh, redistribution becomes more important uh, rather than trickle down. So, trickle down or redistribution done by government is a big difference. So, in that point, uh, to answer your question directly, it's a still perfectly same as Abe or maybe some development from Abe in economic policies and also a little bit the shift towards a, a more center or liberal center from Abe or still remains and socially policies and that's already started when Suga was in uh, the office last year I think and uh, uh, your second question is the corner sons, right? And I've been friends with him almost 30 years, and he's also in the Georgetown, and we've been knowing each other a very long time. But uh, seems like he's in liberal for social 
policies, I think. Uh, but uh, in economic policies, uh, I think he is more for deregulations, uh, more reform. So seems like uh, more close to Abe Wan or Koizumi. So uh, and also his way of doing sometimes uh, uh, looks him more more or harsh or hawkish. But uh, I don't know. I actually don't know. But he's sometimes actually shouting. But. Uh, uh, he, he is uh, soft on, uh, uh, you know, on, on normal communications. But uh, when he's shouting, he's really, you know, he, he seems need to do this kind of deregulation or you know more his policies, and he, he his passion is too strong so that that, that makes him shout against those. Uh, uh, people, especially those in the uh, ministries, uh, which are against his uh, policy uh, directions. Uh, so, uh, and also, uh, I think he's uh, not hawkish in the uh, defense of foreign policies, but I don't know, he, he sometimes changes, so. And like you said, I'm, I cannot speak for him. So uh, that's how uh, I understand him in these uh, 30 years. OK. Just a second. Thank you. My name is Richard Silo from Indonesia, uh, Tribune News, Compass newspaper. Mm. Uh, since uh, Ms. Uh, Takaichi very clearly and several times mentioned about that she will come as a, if uh, elected as a prime minister, she will come to the Yasukuni Jinja. Mm. So what is, uh, how do you think the policy, foreign policy of uh, Kishida uh, to the uh, international uh, society and especially <laughs> for this Yasukuni Jinja is a very troubling Mm. Uh, one and the second question about uh, what should be the uh, position of Japan uh, towards the uh, the new uh, Afghanistan Taliban new government. Mm. Thank you. Mm. Thank you. Uh, like I said, uh, uh, we've been uh, we've been Kishida uh, group already published two uh, policy papers. One is the how to tackle with the corona. Uh, last week and this week we just uh, uh, came up with the new capitalism. So third one will be the defense and foreign policies. Uh, so we are still working on that. Uh, but uh, let me say Kishida-san, uh, being a foreign minister for more than four years, I think, uh, uh, he's very realistic because he has to be because he has been uh, foreign ministers for uh, such a long time, so uh, and he has a good track record, including the uh, negotiation between the Korea about uh, uh, so-called uh, consular woman issues. So, uh, so he knows what happens if he, as a prime minister, visits the shrine. So he never says about what to do, but uh, I understand that he has to be very realistic and he will be realistic about those issues, uh, like he did while he was in the foreign ministership. And uh, so basic uh, policy is uh, firmly uh, keep intact uh, with the United States by uh, alliance between uh, US Japan. And at the same time, uh, dealing uh, with the neighbor countries such as Korea and China is very important. Um, foreign policy, uh, actually, you know, the, when at the end of the day, when you're in prime minister, foreign minister, you cannot change so dramatically within uh, the party. And even if we change the party, uh, the history of the 
DPJ government uh, shows that if you change, try to change without uh, preparation and uh, good uh, strategies, that will make a big mistake. And we had a lesson from those DPJ days. So, and uh, Kishida, I think, is the most suitable because he experienced himself as a foreign minister for such a long years. So that uh, the stability and continuity and realism uh, is the, his keyword for foreign policies. And uh, 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 stance with the Taliban, uh, I don't know, already, uh, nothing already uh, submitted by, uh, uh, announced by the uh, Suga cabinet. And, uh, I don't know when the Suga cabinet, uh, until we choose a new president of the LDP as a prime minister of the early October, uh, there's a, another one month. And uh, within this one month, I don't know what will happen. Uh, European, Americans, and other countries will show up their stand, official stance with the Taliban government. and. Uh, uh, Fortunately, unfortunately, I, I don't think Jap J Japanese government is the number one or earliest government to do something <laughs> so that uh, uh, still we are watching. But uh, uh, again, if things remain undecided until uh, Kishida will be a prime minister, uh, what he's going to do is the realistic things, I think. Okay, thank you. Uh, there's another person. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Hello, uh, Sayuri Diamond, um, freelance. Man. Sorry, uh, for, former editor of the Japan Times. Mm. Um, it's good that uh, we are now seeing many faces uh, running for the uh, presidential election mm. for the LDP, mm. but at the same time, uh, people. Like many people, including myself, feel that uh, there are like old guards uh, controlling behind the scenes. And I'd like to know, like for example, like Mr. Abe or supporting uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Kaichi mm. or Ms. Aso, Mr. Aso and all, so on. So um, I would like to know what you think about this uh, structure. I mean, mm. would that conti continue to be sure. ruling in the, uh, in the, in the LDP? Mm -hmm. And also, um, who do you think Mr. Nikai will back and would that influence the presidential election? Mm, mm. And my second question is that uh, since you are the right hand man for Mr. Kishida, I'm not sure whether <laughs> you're comfortable answering this question, but uh, what would you think that uh, his uh, weakness would be? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, uh, the, like I said briefly at the first uh, remark, uh, beginning remark, uh, the, compared to last year, uh, we see the, each faction decide very quickly to support Suga. And before the official peer, campaign period started, it's already decided. Uh, so compared to that, maybe one of the reasons is uh, the general election is very getting close. But also, I see some structural change within the party. It's uh, like... Uh, Two times, third times, elected members get together and uh, mounting up to more than seven, seven zero, 70 people gathered. And those are members who are belonging to the faction and are not belonging to the faction. But those are started to say, hey, we would like to vote uh, after we hear the debate and independently from what the faction leader says. So. Seems like if they are doing that, uh, and that means that even before that group came up, each member is saying that, actually. I'm uh, having a telephone conversation with those people. And each individual started to do that. And then that happened. So uh, could be and in the, the position of the faction leader then, if they're trying to force, no, 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 we have to do this, then they can expect that the sum of the people 
not listen to those faction leaders. So that is the case that faction leaders don't want to see that because that shows, oh, this leader is not controlling all the members of the faction. So that's why such a phenomena of like last year is not happening yet is those uh, uh, structural change so that uh, each faction leaders are trying to watch what's going to happen and then the, uh, they have to keep their uh, kind of position as a leader so the risk is even if they're trying to do something as a leader but that is not completed, then the, uh, that is going to weaken their leadership too. So that's why they are still watching. So I think uh, this situation might continue until the boarding date. So uh, this is going to be, because uh, if you are the uh, Lankan Fire members, right, two third times elected, and your district is not so strong, then you will take a risk of obeying, you know, the faction leaders and not voting for the candidacy which he himself thinks the right person, she or she thinks the right person, or those uh, not uh, going well with the voters within his district. So that will risk his own seat. So. That's the things what's uh, happening and we are observing now. So that's the change we see compared to last year. And so weakness of Kishida, like I said, he is not so decisive until last time. We pushed him many times and he didn't run for office, uh, presidency, uh, the, not last time, but before us and before us and last. So, and uh, this time, he was really decisive. And uh, I was surprised to see his face on the conference when he first announced his uh, uh, candidacy. So I think this one year makes him more tough. So maybe uh, if I say his, uh, 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 if he's become more smooth on his speech, <laughs> Uh, you know, might be good. But uh, on the other hand side is, if you speak too fluently too much, that will going to be a, a reason of the mistake. <laughs> so we still remember Prime Minister Ohira called to be Aou Prime Minister. So he's always say Aou ah, before he announced a word. And it's said that the, while he's saying ah, ooh, he's thinking which word to be chosen. So maybe I think he, uh, I, I was saying Kishida san is the, they was ah, ooh. you know, they was Ohira version of the ah, ooh. So why, so when he's, uh, you know, uh, not so f uh, smooth, I think he's thinking what words to be chosen. So maybe that's not as so fatal. Uh, weakness, but uh, on the TV show debating, uh, maybe that is shown as uh, not a smooth uh, leader. So, and I think in that point too, uh, he is improving compared with the last time. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, let's uh, qu quickly uh, read out uh, some of the questions came in by email. Um, we have about 10 minutes remaining. Okay, this is from Anthony Rowley of uh, South China Morning Post. Um, which of the main candidates would be the most friendly or least friendly uh, in their policies toward China? Hmm. Hmm? I think uh, uh, friendly is not a right word because, uh, like I said, Kishida is very realistic. So uh, realistic means uh, former uh, foreign minister and also uh, if he becomes a prime minister, uh, he has to take a very uh, minute balance between the public opinion and the foreign policy requirement. So, uh, label friendly uh, is a very difficult word uh, in nowadays in, in Japan. So we have to improve this situation. 
but still uh, be realistically, uh, you know, dealing with China is the very important uh, matters. Like uh, uh, when the Prime Minister Abe started the strategic uh, 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 mutually uh, interesting mutual interest uh, relationship between China, so that's going to be uh, the ones. And I think the uh, uh, and ideologies type of things doesn't have to be in that realistic diplomacy. So in that sense, uh, uh, Kishida will be the most uh, realistic uh, mm. prime minister, I think. Mm. Okay. Uh, okay, um, let's move on to the next question. The, uh, this is from uh, Eric Johnson, uh, Japan Times. Uh, Mr. Kishida is proposing a three-year uh, term limit for senior LDP leaders. Mm -hmm. uh, would your faction also support a policy, tr uh, uh, a policy of term limit for cabinet members, especially for high-profile uh, Costs like finance and finance minister, and uh, uh, also um, some of the senior or elder uh, LDP figures are retiring or announcing uh, have announced that, that they retire, like Mr. Uh, Ibuki Bume, mm. uh, Takeshita Wataru, and uh, Shiozaki uh, yes, Yasuisa. Yes, um, does this uh, signify some some structural change within LDP, and do you see any difference? Uh, the fundamental difference between your generation and those uh, uh, retiring uh, uh, politicians, mm. uh, re you know, who are retiring uh, mm. in this election. Mm. Thank you. Uh, the uh, Kishida-san's differentiating the uh, post in the LDP top uh, leadership and the uh, cabinet members, and uh, since uh, it becomes, uh, uh, like I said at the beginning, uh, the single members district. The factions weakening, and then the party leadership becomes more strong. So they have uh, uh, power of the who's going to be a official candidate from LDP, and also uh, they are controlling the other uh, party monies. So uh, that's why uh, the leadership uh, from the governor, governance point uh, point of view has to be renewed every three years. That's what Kishida-san is trying to achieve. But on the other hand side, government side, uh, you know, continuity is very important. And uh, almost all the uh, cabinet uh, membership, except uh, this uh, finance minister, so uh, maybe Kishida-san served as foreign minister for more than three years. But this is a very exceptional case. So I never talk about this point with the Kishida-san, but I feel that for the cabinet members, uh, I still remember Koizumi-san started to say, one cabinet, one minister. Mm. So continuity is more needed for the cabinet uh, than the party leadership. And I think uh, being myself as a three years in the agriculture minister, uh, only one year, uh, you, you, you have a big difficulty with the personnel and continuous policy making as ministers. So I think uh, the difference, uh, uh, different uh, uh, vector uh, for the cabinet membership also, uh, cabinet membership compared to the party leadership. And the uh, second question is what? Uh, the yeah, about those uh, senior politicians for retirement. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. You see retirement. Age, generational yeah. differences. Yeah. Seems like, uh, you know, since I'm getting old, uh, I still think that uh, Shiozaki san and uh, Kamoshi san is a uh, young guy, but uh, now they're becoming more than 70 years. So mm. I think uh, uh, that each election every three, four years happens and uh, some generational change and uh, happens, but this time, more members are retiring, mm -hmm. and uh, more reshuffle gonna be happening. So in LDP too, but also in the opposition party and uh, other parties. So I think uh, it's very difficult, also the retiring member is like this, and then the remaining younger one is that. 
But uh, what I feel is they are more policy oriented. I think because choosing a prime minister this time, like I said for the last question, the borders watching that and borders more informed. So borders tr started to think about uh, more for policy and what's going to happen. And they are more concerned with the kind of policies rather than just poking. So I think that's the change, and that this time that will happen more, uh, that will result in more uh, personal change and uh, generational change in the membership. So uh, that's what I feel. Yeah. Okay. I think uh, this is going to have to be the last question. Uh, this is the, from uh, Karin Nishimura of Radio France and uh, a Liberation newspaper. Um, Mr. Kishida uh, has put up uh, some uh, coronavirus uh, policies and the uh, economic policies, which uh, are, uh, are different from that of uh, Prime Minister Suga. Mm. If he has a different policy, uh, shouldn't, shouldn't he have uh, spoken out during the uh, uh, Suga administration rather than uh, saying it now that now, now he's a candidate? Mm. Isn't there sort of like a system within LDP that if uh, uh, some a member uh, disagrees with the current policy, that he can he can speak out and uh, uh, make you know make things happen, or they have to wait until the uh, next mm. prime uh, presidential mm. election and uh, run uh, as a candidate and to to realize their policies. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so uh, for uh, to begin with, that if he has been a policy chairman like he was uh, in Abe's uh, mm. uh, cabinet. Seicho Kaicho. Seicho Kaicho, mm. policy mm. council chairman. Then he uh, has to do that, I think. But uh, under Suga's uh, prime ministership, he's out of the party leadership, and uh, he serves uh, in no capacities. So in that sense, uh, he has a liberty of saying more uh, other options in this one year. And what he's trying to, uh, what he's saying is, actually what he did while he is in the policy council chair, uh, like, uh, you know, su subsidy for uh, the uh, yachting, uh, tenant fee, mm. and also uh, distributing some uh, uh, money for those people who are in need. So those are the things he did while he was in the policy council chairship. So, and also, as a general rule, uh, after the presidential election, and uh, once the door is closed and the president was elected as a prime minister, then party members, either he or she voted for she or he, uh, has to join as a party. But then, if doors open again or windows open again as a presidential election, uh, we, we are kind of allowed to discuss more freely about what should be the next. So those are the rules of the presidential elections, uh, at least in these 26 years I've been seeing that. So, and that makes party more active and uh, energetic uh, for the next generation. So. On the top of that, he has been in the policy council uh, up until one year ago, but this one year, he has not been in that position. Mm. But is there like a mechanism within the LDP that when, say, a member of the party mm. had some opinion or different opinion from that of the government, uh, is there some mechanism where you know the party can sort of uh, reflect or the, uh, sure, absor sure. absorb the, uh, the mm -hmm. voices of the members yeah. uh, during the administration mm -hmm. uh, uh, when someone, uh, the lawmaker, doesn't know the pr prime minister personally or? Yeah, those are the discussion and in policy council we have been policy discussing council. all the time. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, Kishida-san and the, uh, our member are saying that that should be done. Mm -hmm. But uh, as a result, it uh, was not. It, it's not happened. So that's the that's the things that in this one year things. Okay. 
Right. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Hayashi. Uh, I know you have to go. Uh, and thank you very much for coming uh, to, uh, to the press conference. I think uh, this will wrap up our press conference. And we have asked all the presidential candidates uh, in the LDP uh, presidential elections. And Mr. Kishida is scheduled to appear on Monday. Uh, and uh, we have asked all other candidates uh, or other candidates who uh, adds their announced official candidacy. And I'm hoping that uh, that everyone uh, will appear here and have uh, all the correspondents have opportunity to ask questions to each one of them. But uh, let's start with the uh, Prime Minister, uh, the Prime Minister candidate, uh, Kishida, on Monday. So uh, please join us on Monday. Uh, I think it's, uh, I forgot the time, I think it's at uh, one o'clock, but uh, please check on the website. So thank you, thank you very much for coming. Thank you.